Всем привет! And welcome back! Today I prepared a very special video, and uh, this video is for total beginners. Well, you should know the alphabet to be able to understand everything. But still, I will show you the very basics of the Russian grammar. The main idea is that by the end of this video, you will know enough to start having simple conversations in Russian. How does it sound? But if you want to get the most out of this video, uh, please write your own examples and uh, maybe even short stories using the grammar and the vocabulary you will see in this video. So, поехали! Let's start with personal pronouns. Личные местоимения. Я. Ты. Informal. Вы. Formal. Он. Она. Оно. Мы. Вы. Plural. Они. Here we have a full list. So, я, ты, or вы, он, она, оно, мы, вы, они. The next, what we should learn, gender. In Russian, uh, it's very important to know the gender. And later you will see why. We have masculine, feminine, and neutral. Masculine nouns and in uh, consonant or y. Feminine nouns and in a or ya. And neutral ones and in o or ya. We also have nouns ended in soft sign. So they can be either masculine or feminine. We should memorize this. There is a little tip that might help you to memorize the endings. So let's have a look at the personal pronouns. On, masculine, and on ends in n. N is a consonant. Ana, it ends in a and it's feminine. Ano ends in o, so it's neutral. Let's see some examples. Masculine. Film. Because M is a consonant. Journal. L is a consonant. Kniga. It ends in A, so it's feminine. Musica also ends in A, so it's also a feminine. And the last one, video. It ends in O. So it's neutral. Now we are ready to learn how to form the past tense. It's pretty important because if your goal is to speak Russian with other people, then uh, it's better to start with this tense. I guess most of the time when we talk to people, we talk about some past activities. We share what we did yesterday last week or at the weekend. I have a question for you. Что они делали вчера? What did they do yesterday? Она читала книгу. She read a book. Он читал книгу. He read a book. Они читали книгу. They read a book. Maybe you've just noticed something. So let's have a closer look. Let's see these examples. Он читал. So he read. Она читала. She read. Оно читало. It read. Мы, вы, они читали. We, you, plural, they. So in the past tense, we change verbs based on gender and number. Now, let's see how to form the past tense. I chose a very common verb, работать, and this is a basic form. So, to be able to make the past tense, first we need to remove t and soft sign. Now, we have работа, and we just add an appropriate ending. 
So, for example, a man can say ja rabotal. A woman can say ja rabota la. Or if it's a group of people, they can say my rabota li. Now I have a list of very basic verbs. Rabotat, adhat, delat, chitat, smatret, zavtrakat, abedat, i ujanat. And now I can describe what I did yesterday. So Chira ya and I'm a woman. Zavtraka la rabota la abedala chitala kujinala i smatrela film. And my husband can say Vchira ya dialal mnoga. Ya rabotal i Nie adhal. So you can see the difference. In the first one, the speaker is a woman, so we use the ending la, and in the second one, the speaker is a man, so we use the ending l. So what about you? Što vy delali včera? And here I'm using you, vy, as a singular formal. Now we can add some more information and, for example, tell what your family members or pets, if you have any, did yesterday. But for that, we need to learn how to say I have. To be able to say I have or you have, we have special phrases. У меня есть and у тебя есть. For this video, I chose an informal version because I think it's most common one. So now let's have a look at two, three examples. First one. У меня есть мама. Вчера она завтракала, работала, обедала, ужинала, читала и отдыхала. У меня есть папа. Вчера он завтракал, гулял, смотрел фильм, обедал, не работал. Он пенсионер. Ужинал. И у меня есть муж. Вчера он не завтракал. Он много работал и не отдыхал. Обедал. Смотрел фильм, ужинал, читал. So what about you? У тебя есть муж? У тебя есть жена? У тебя есть собака? У тебя есть кошка? Что они делали вчера? If you are writing your Russian text, then... You can pause the video and write similar phrases about your family members, pets, friends. Now we need two more verbs. So in Russian, to eat is yest and to drink is pit. Let's have a look at their past forms. Please pay attention that yest is irregular verb. So on yel, ana. Yela i ani yeli. You can see we don't have s in the past form. Pit on pil ana pila ani pili. Normally, when we use these verbs to eat and to drink, but also to watch or to read, we add some extra information like what we drank, ate, watched, or Red. And to be able to do this properly in Russian, we need to learn the accusative case. But first, do you remember about genders? We have three genders, masculine, feminine, neutral, right? And I hope you remember that. And now I have some words. Pizza. 
Кола. Фильм. Сериал. Бургер. Паста. Яйцо. Музыка. Сэндвич. Суп. Журнал. Авокадо. И книга. Please pause this video and try to put them into the column based on their gender. Now let's see the correct answer. The masculine nouns are film, сериал, бургер, сэндвич, суп, журнал. As you can see, all these nouns are ended in a consonant. Feminine nouns, pizza, cola, музыка, паста, книга. They're all ended in a. So, they are feminine. And neuter. Яйцо. Авокадо. Yes, they are ended in o. So, they are neuter. And now I want to show you some examples. Вчера я завтракала. Я ела сэндвич и пила чай. Я обедала. Я ела суп. Here, сэндвич, чай и суп are direct objects. So, they answer the question what. What did I eat? Что я ела? Я ела сэндвич. What did I drink? Что я пила? Я пила чай. And... In this situation, we need to use the accusative case. But you can see that here there are no difference between the basic form and the like, accusative case for another example. Вчера мой муж не завтракал. Он обедал. Он не ел авокадо. Он ел яйцо. Again, the same thing. Here we use the accusative case because avocado and yitzo are direct objects in these phrases. But you can see that there are no difference between the basic form and the accusative case form. And the last one. Вчера мы ужинали. Мы ели пасту. Потом я читала книгу. Муж Слушал музыку. And here we can see some changes. Паста, книга и музыка are feminine, if you remember. Let's see the rule. For the feminine nouns, we have special endings. If a word ends in a, we should change it into u. Книга. Но я читала книгу. Музыка. Но я слушала музыку. If a word ends in я, yeah, then we should use the ending you. For example, информация. Я читала информацию. Here's a short formula to remember the rule. So я ела, as an example, пицца, бургер, авокадо, feminine, masculine, neuter. Я ела пи. Су, бургер и авокадо. So what about you? Что вы пили вчера? Что вы ели вчера? Что вы смотрели? И что вы читали? Don't forget, we have to use the accusative case after all these verbs. Now we are ready to learn about the present tense. But here we have a difference. So, if you remember, to be able to make the past tense, we changed verbs based on gender and number. But in the present tense, a Russian verb has six forms. One for each of the subject pronouns. So, я, ты, он, она, uh, мы, вы и они. But today we are going to learn only three forms. Я, ты, он, она. Because as a beginner, you use these forms all the time. For the present tense, we divide verbs into two main groups. Verbs 
and it in at or yat, and another group, verbs, and it in eat. Let's have a look at one verb, izuchat, which means to study. And this verb ends in at, so it belongs to the first group. And let's check the endings for this group. So ya, ja, the ending is you, ty, yes, on ana, yet, izuchat. It's the basic form, infinitive. First, again, we should remove the last two letters. We have izucha. And now we only should add an appropriate ending. For example, ya izucha you. I study. Ya izucha you ruski. How will you say you study? Ty. Изучаешь. Another verb. Работать. So, я работаю. Ты работаешь. Он, она работает. Now, let's have a look at the verbs and it in яд. For example, гулять. To walk. Again, we should remove the last two letters. We have гуля. And add an appropriate ending. Ya gula you. How will you say she walks? Ana gula yet. Gavarit. To speak. This verb ends in eat and belongs to the second group. Endings for this group are you, ish, and eat. So gavarit. Again, it's infinitive. And now we have to remove, attention, three letters. So we have govor. But now, again, we simply add an appropriate ending. Ya, gava, ru. So how will you say you speak? Ti. Here you can see a table with all the endings that we need to know. Изучать. Я изучаю. Ты изучаешь. Он изучает. Гулять. Я гуляю. Ты гуляешь. Он гуляет. Говорить. Я говорю. Ты говоришь. Он говорит. So what am I doing right now? То я делаю сейчас. Сейчас я работаю. Я читаю текст. Говорю по-русски и по-английски. Делаю видео. Слушаю музыку. And also you can see here an example of the accusative case. What about you? Что ты сейчас Делаешь. Please pay attention that the present tense has a lot of different spelling rules and some kind of exceptions. But today we are working with the basic forms, like mostly with the regular basic forms. So if you master them, then different exceptions won't be a big deal. Now we need the future tense. And for that I have a few examples. Завтра, which means tomorrow. Завтра я буду работать, буду читать и не буду отдыхать. Завтра ты будешь работать, будешь читать, не будешь отдыхать. Завтра он или она будет работать, будет читать, не будет отдыхать. I guess you noticed something. As you can see, to be able to create the future tense, we need буду, будешь и будет plus infinitive. So, что ты будешь делать завтра? Oh my god, it's incredible. Uh, but we we can say a lot of things about our daily routine, right? So now I want to use all the tenses in one short story. Сегодня 
утром я принимала душ и завтракала. Я ела сэндвич и пила кофе. Потом смотрела видео. Сейчас я работаю. Я делаю видео. Читаю презентацию и много говорю. Потом я буду обедать. У меня есть обед. Я буду есть суп. Потом буду работать. Вечером я буду ужинать. Я буду есть пиццу. Потом я буду смотреть футбол или читать книгу. The next step is to talk about locations, to add where we are. And for that, we need to learn about the prepositional case. But before we do that, we should learn some prepositions of place. Because in Russian, it's not so simple. We have two most common prepositions. В и на. We use в with unclosed spaces, buildings, countries, cities or towns. And we use на with open spaces and events. For example, в plus office, школа, supermarket. На plus улица, which means street, работа or concert. And now we are ready to learn about the prepositional case. I'm going to give you three locations. Москва, Будапешт и комната, which means room. Я жила в Москве. Сейчас я в Будапеште. Работаю в комнате. As you can see, I use the preposition в because Москва is a city, Budapest is a city, and комната is an enclosed space. But we also have here different endings. В Москве, Будапеште, комнате. And even though Москва and комната are feminine and Budapest is masculine, We use the same ending here. Office plus je, школа, also je. And Adintsova, it's a town in Russia, will be also je. Ja v ofisie, ja v škole, or ja v Adintsove. These are the most common endings, but we also have like other ones, and definitely we have some exceptions. But still, what about you? Где вы сейчас? Now we are ready to learn about the adjectives. So we can describe those locations, for example. Adjectives. Always agree in gender, number, and case with the nouns to which they refer. And in Russian we have two main variants of adjective endings. Hard and soft. Today we are going to learn the hard variant because probably 90% of the adjectives you need right now belong to the hard variant. The basic form of the adjectives you can always find in a dictionary. And it is masculine and singular. Two main endings are ы, for example, старый, новый, красивый, and ой, for example, Дорогой. Now let's see how it works. We see two examples here. Красивый город и дорогой город. The feminine version is an aya ending. So красивая книга и дорогая книга. And the neutral красивое кафе и дорогое кафе. The ending is I will tell you one short example. Budapest, masculine. Budapest, красивый, старый и интересный. Москва, feminine. Тоже красивая 
старая и интересная. But there is one very important spelling rule. After the letters k, g and h, we can't write the letter u. Instead, we should write the letter e. That's why we can see that we write rus ki язык or anglis ki язык и malin ki город because the consonant before the ending is k so after we should write e this doesn't put these adjectives into the like, soft category because feminine and neutral forms are regular like normal yeah rus ki yezik but rus ka ya kultura rus ko ye slova another very short practice so u minya yest kniga i sichas ya chitayu knigu kniga interesnaya i Большая. And the last one. It is so common that we want to say I went somewhere or I will go. And for that, we need to learn some special verbs. Even though the concept of verbs of motion in the Russian language is pretty complicated, today we are going to learn like, the most basic forms so that you can use them right away. And these forms will cover maybe like 80% of the situations when you need to use them. The first pair of verbs is itti hadit, which means to go by foot or like to walk. Now we use these verbs now when we get somewhere by foot, obviously. If you want to talk about the past, So you want to say you went somewhere yesterday, two days ago, last weekend. Use the verb ходить. Я ходил в кафе. Она ходила в кафе. Мы ходили в кафе. Now, the present tense. So if you want to say that you go somewhere regularly, again, use the verb ходить. For example, каждый день, every day. Я хожу в кафе. Please pay attention that the conjugation here is not regular. Ты ходишь в кафе? Она ходит. If you want to talk about your plans, like I will go somewhere, use the verb идти. Идти. So let's say tomorrow, завтра. Я Иду в кафе. Ты идешь в кафе. Она идет в кафе. Let's see some more examples. Вчера я ходила в супермаркет. Я не хожу в супермаркет каждый день, но завтра я опять иду в супермаркет. You can see here that I used the preposition в because supermarket uh, is a building, it's an enclosed space. Cool. But I didn't change anything in the word itself. Another example. Вчера муж ходил на работу. Сегодня он не идет на работу. Here We can see that I use the preposition на because работа is kind of an event. And uh, I said that на работу. So I changed the basic form because the basic form is работа and it's feminine. Maybe you recognize this form because we already used the accusative case. With verbs of motion, we should use the accusative case. How it works. Iti or hadid plus an appropriate preposition, v or na, plus location. So if location is masculine, 
then no changes. If it's feminine, then u or u. And if it's neutral, then no changes. We have three locations. Ristaran, masculine. Работа, feminine. And cafe. Вчера я ходила в ресторан. No changes because restaurant is masculine. На работу. У, because работа is feminine. И в кафе. No changes. What about you? Куда вы ходили вчера? Куда ты ходишь каждый день? Куда ты идешь завтра? And uh, another pair of verbs we use when we go by transport somewhere. So normally we use it when we want to talk about our trips. When we use these verbs, it means that we used a car or a train or a bus. If you want to talk about the past, so you went somewhere, use the verb ездить. Он ездил в Будапешт. Она ездила в Будапешт. Мы ездили в Будапешт. If you want to say about regular activities in the present, use the verb ездить. Again, я езжу в Будапешт. You can see that this conjugation is very irregular. Ты ездишь в Будапешт, и она ездит в Будапешт. And the last one, future. If you want to talk about your plans, use the verb ехать. For example, tomorrow, завтра. Я еду в Будапешт. Again, this form is irregular. Ты едешь в Будапешт. Она едет в Будапешт. Let's see one small example. Я уже ездила в Будапешт. Я не езжу в Будапешт часто, но завтра я еду в Будапешт. So, what about you? Куда ты ездишь каждый день? Куда ты едешь завтра? И Куда вы ездили вчера? And that's it. So these are the basics that you need if you want to speak Russian from the very, very beginning. I hope it was useful and see you in the next video. Пока!